And now, live from our Smokehouse studio, it's time for Real Estate Jerky. All your real estate questions answered by our provocatively lean expert host, Edward Ed Parco, MBA, veteran, and president of Lending for Living. We'll give you something to chew on. Real Estate Jerky is on now. That's my California. Thanks for joining us here on Real Six Jerky. I'm your host, Ed Parco, president of Lending for Living, along with my co-host, Mike Kelly. We're keeping you up to date on real estate and what's happening in our communities. Our studio is right here in Modesto at Lending for Living with our knowledgeable engineer, Mike Murray, and the incredible radio signal of iHeartMedia and the station KFIV. We always bring you some of the chew on here at Real Estate Jerky. If you have any questions, you can call or text me at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915. Or email me at radio at real estate jerky. Hey, Mike, thanks for you know co-hosting real estate jerky with me again today. Absolutely, I'm your new co-host. Yeah, probationary period is swift. <laughs> You're still in that probationary period, so don't you forget I, about that. I do that. believe so. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I was like said that. I'm like, oh, yeah. I wonder if you'll get upset about that when I said. I'm like, not no. Mike. No, I've been on probation before. <laughs> That's right. Ain't Many times. You just got that <laughs> anklet cut off recently. I still got one. All right. So a um, couple things we want to talk about. We, you know, a lot of people don't know, but we do a local, we do the morning show on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. That's why I thought you'd be great for this. And we do that 8.30 Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So check it out. Uh, but we talked a little bit about this week about inflation and how that changed the market a little bit for interest rates and that kind of stuff. Um, and it was very volatile up and, you know, it's, I should say it's volatile right now about rates. One day, everybody's like, Oh my goodness, it's amazing. We're out of this next day. Oh my gosh. We're about ready to collapse again. Almost like investing in crypto. I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. Well, now you brought that up. So <laughs> I'm, I was asked to do a documentary that's coming out this month. Yeah. And when the guy is explaining when he, to us, the promo that, you know, here's what's coming out and, you know, real estate. I, and he goes, I was talking to a bunch of people I know that was before saying, you know, I'm making so much in crypto. I don't want to get into real estate. And he's like, and that guy just lost $50 million. Yeah. And another guy just lost $20 million. And he's like, I think it's a really good time to get into real estate. And I'm like, it's always it's a, a good, good time, time to, to get into real, real estate, estate. Yep. especially in a down market. So you can learn. Well, yeah, but I mean, we're not in a down market. No, I know that. I said, especially in a down market, so you can learn. Right. When you get into real estate, we want you to be good at what you're doing, not just be a another one we don't want to deal with. Okay, gotcha. So, um, well, I mean, there's only 3,100 agents in Modesto. <laughs> <laughs> not in Modesto. <laughs> okay, Stanislaus County. So, well, yeah. CVAR, um, Central Valley Association of Realtors, has about 3,100, a little over 3,100 members, and that covers Manteca, Tracy, Ripon, Oakdale, uh, Riverbank. Every, a everywhere. Lot it's of a members. lot of members. Yeah, and the question is, how many work full-time, 10%? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Well, the joke used to be, when I was younger, is how do you know you're from California? You have a California driver's license and a California real estate Real estate license. license. Yeah. yeah, when the CHP pull you over, they ask for your real estate license because not everybody has a driver's license. Well, well, they just know that would be active. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, so we ta- we brought, I keep saying so, I got to stop that. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. So what? Yeah. We were talking earlier about the small homes in Riverbank. Have yes. You, have you found out any more information about no, that? No, no. Yesterday was actually a pretty busy day. So I worked real estate and didn't do a lot of research. But when we had um, the planning commissioner for Riverbank speak the other day in Oakdale marketing meeting, she talked about, you know, base price of 350 as low as 400 square feet, as high as 1,100 square feet. I don't know that 1,100 square feet is high. Is Well, I don't know if it qualifies for a small home. I mean, it's small on some standards, but is it really a tiny home? Well, I, you know, that's the size of homes they built for veterans coming back from the war in the 1950s, mm-hmm. right? That's the house I lived on, Brady. Those were the houses for the veterans yep. that they built. Yep. They were 1,100 square feet, and that was fine. I think the thing that's changed a lot in our real estate market is you're going to buy a house, and you might raise your family in that house and not sell it. Are you following me there? Yeah. Because you got a great interest rate on it. You don't know what the market's doing, and if you buy down it might cost you more. 
Right. 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 So I, I just see a lot more people stacking kids up in bedrooms with bunk beds and whatever. Well, like we used to. I mean, look at how many people in the college area that or in the Northgate area who are selling for the first time and they're selling for the first time because they're dead. So the estate is selling. I know that's the bad. That's but I'm saying that's the truth. They stay there forever. They move into a great neighborhood. The house is large enough for them to figure it out with the kids. And it's plenty large when it's just the two of them or the one of them and, you know, go from there. So we're, I think we're going to start seeing more of that again, not the every seven years move. Wow. And uh, you're listening to Real Estate Jerky here. I'm your host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage advisor, and president of Lending for Living. You can reach out to me at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915. And this is Power Talk 1360 KFIV. All right. So coming up a little bit, we're going to have Betsy Hirsch Younger on. She's going to be talking Love about her. Yeah, uh, Tuolumne County and how great it is up there to live and what's good about up there. I can tell you there's a lot of good about there. One is 20 degrees cooler in mm-hmm. the summertime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Up in, I mean, way up there. Right. Like where we are, not Sonora, because the problem, some of those foothills, it can get hotter mm-hmm. because the heat just stays there. They don't have the Delta breeze. Yeah. Like copper. Copperopolis. Yeah. Yeah. It gets hot. Yeah. It, it, it stays hot. Right. That's the problem. Right? Yeah. We're here. We'll get, you know, we'll start off in the morning when the really bad day at 71 degrees and it gets to hundred and something. And then, you know, that's the problem I don't like. And then, but like today when it was 60 something, you know, it's really nice. Mm-hmm. And so these are the summer months I like. Yeah. Or days. I, should I say. like them all. Do you? All of, them? all of them? Yeah. But you got that pool. I don't have mine done yet. I got the pool. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> They're digging next week. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you say that I, we have to go through a back neighbor's house because you know these are the smaller homes right on, you know the- and of course they add it on and add it on i don't get it because one side there's a foot separation pretty much from my garage and the fence the other side is three feet you can't get anything there in there crane brought over the jacuzzi we had years ago wow yeah wow yeah That's- they, they do make one um i think you need four feet though what it was a skid steer. It was a skid steer oh. that also had, you know, the bucket on the end of it. So you, and they were able to go through just a regular man gate, um, and not have to open up my wide gate at the last house I built a pool at. Mm. So how much did it cost you to bury the utilities? Um, Cause, it, cause it was it, less than what MID wanted to put it for, to put in a new pole to move the drop yeah. line. So I, I want to say, well, that, that, now this was six years ago. I want to say I spent and, and I put in a new 200 amp panel on the house at the same time. I spent $3,500 burying it and putting in the new panel and, um, MID, I believe wanted $5,000 to put a new pole in. Well, that's cheap because I know at my property, it's 20 grand per pool to get them to put it in at the new property to get it to where we need it. And we need four pools. Oh, gee, many Christmas. Yeah, that's what I said. Everything's expensive. Well, especially when they got to dig and move. And so, you, uh, well, and you get six months out to do it, that kind of stuff. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's pretty bad. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. But that's what happens when you, and that's why it's so expensive to build in California. And that's why a lot of builders, you know, have slowed down because they're like, with the additional 20% or 30% cost that we've been hit with, it's, we can't pass that on. No, you can't pass it along. Yeah. And so, and actually I read an article that some builders and it's not in California, of course, have a, a glutton of homes right now. They have 50, 55 homes that they're building and, and only five under contract. Oh, that's, that's not good. No, because I think a lot of people got nervous in the last right. three months. We've been talking about this on other places and here that stop worrying about that. This is the perfect time to buy. Um, you can buy where, you know, not have to pay 20 to 50,000 over asking and able to go ahead and worry about refinancing down the road. Don't worry about it now. Just go out and buy that house you want. You got less competition right now. It's going to start back up again. I'm thinking in October. Kind of sounds like we've, we've been saying for a couple months. Just a couple. I've been saying since January. Yeah. What month we in? August. Well, yeah. It's a couple. It's a yeah. couple. But it's just, you know, it, and I think we're just in a kinder, gentler market right now, which means everybody's working with each other. Nobody's uh, gouging somebody. No one's taking advantage of it. Everybody feels like they're getting a good deal now versus you have to take this home. You don't, you're, thank you so much for letting me buy your house. Exactly. Here's a couple extra thousands of dollars and uh, don't worry. I won't ask for anything. 
Right, right. Um, you know, we're out here always to help you on real estate jerky, help you become a homeowner, then help you become a better homeowner with the right resources and ways to protect your investment, uh, your home. When we come back, we'll be talking with Betsy Hurst Younger, Realtor at Century 21 Wildwood Properties up in Twain Heart. And we'll be talking about the real estate market up the hill and how's it doing. So you can get a hold of me at dial at 209-404-1915, or you can email us at radio at real estate jerky. Stay right here and we'll be right back. You can change the way you live out the rest of your life with our new reverse mortgage products from Lending for Living. Our loan limits are the highest available. Call us today at 209-846-9270 or visit LendingForLiving.com. Welcome back. I'm probationary co-host Mike Kelly at Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, where we always give you something to chew on. I'm here with our host, Ed Parco. Hi, Ed. Hello. MBA, veteran and president of Lending for Living. And our guest today, Betsy Hurst Younger, is one of our most favorite realtors from up in the foothills, Twain Hart, way up there. Way up there. Hello, Betsy. Hey there. Thanks for having me back. Anytime. It's been like a year. It has been a year. Oh, it feels like a week. Yeah. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Love you. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh my gosh. So what's you know, our markets changed down here, other markets changed all over. How's the foothill market? Our markets you changed. You guys still look straight ahead so we can get you on the recording. That's right? okay. Our markets changed and uh we still have um you know a good market. It's just the prices have come down a little bit and the time on the market's just a little bit longer. And uh Last year, I remember buyers thinking how wonderful it was that they were able to get an escrow. And this year, buyers are able to ask for a little bit more than just a home. <laughs> they're asking for some repairs. They're asking for uh, some credits, things like that. Yeah, we say well, I say it's a kinder, gentler market right now. Just so the sellers aren't taking advantage of you, you as a buyer, to get some repairs done, get this done, get some closing costs. So it's everybody's working together again versus how it was for the last two and a half years. Right, and you know what's interesting is um, our average time on the market up there used to be four to six months. Right, and now it's closer to maybe eighty days as opposed to seventy last year year at this time. Hmm. And people are thinking, you know, it's a lot longer on the market, but it, it's really not. Right. Now the property I bought up there, those that acreage, you had that listed for what, six years, five years? I don't think it was that long. But it was pretty long. <laughs> it was pretty long. I'm yeah, just saying that's no, a career listing. Yeah. I know. Huh? Well, the problem is, is people think things are worth certain things and they're not necessarily worth that. Right. And they don't listen to their agent. And then we we're talking about um, doing a few different things that you know, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. The problem is, we try this again. All right. So, the, what'd you say, Betsy, before I left? About the time on market. Yeah, yeah, average time. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. sorry. All right. So, it's so much. I mean, down here, people are complaining about that because it takes two weeks instead right? of instead uh, four of, days or an hour or two hours. Right. right. I list, I put it on the market on Thursday and we're reviewing offers on Monday. Right now, it's we put it on Friday and we're reviewing offers next week sometime or the week after, which is not a bad thing. It's a better market because we don't have the appreciation at 22 to 28%. We don't get all the people knocked out of the market who can't afford it anymore. Mm -hmm. I think it's better. It's a better market right now. That's how I take it. Yeah. I like how you say kinder, gentler. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I do my best. Well, you know, we recently had a multiple offer situation, which we hadn't had something like this in a while. And a property had seven offers on it and they decided to counter back to the ones that were cash. And it went for a lot over asking. Yeah. And it was because of location. And that's, I think that's the most important thing in real estate, right? What's the three most important things in real estate? Location, location, location. What was the third one? Location. Okay. <laughs> that's the same. That's the same thing. Uh -huh. Who said that? Three times. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Woody. Woody. That's right. It's very important to understand that because you can have, and I tell people, it depends on the house and where it's located, what's going to happen with it. Mm -hmm. If you're in a tract and you have a bunch of other houses exactly like it, it's not, might not have multiple offer situations, but if you're up in the foothills or up in the mountains and it's a very unique home, you might still have that multiple offer situation. Mm -hmm. 
then some of those multiple offer situations or those unique locations would be what we're going to be talking about. And that would be lake homes. Mm -hmm. Like you have anything out here? Or you... No, lake homes are cool. <laughs> people like them. They'll overbid. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people don't realize besides Don Pedro, Maloney's, Tulloch. Uh, Tulloch, what other lakes up there have homes next to them? I didn't realize there's actual lakes in Twain Heart. Right. No, we have Twain Heart Lake, which you can only access if you have a Twain Heart Lake membership. And that membership has to come with the home itself because mm. of the location of the home. Passes with the property. Exactly. And then there's a transfer fee of $6,000 and a maintenance fee every year of 375 right now. What are they maintaining? Their membership. Okay. <laughs> No They're physical. maintaining the lake. No, no physicality of maintaining. Well, you know what? They do bring in clean sand and stuff like that. And yeah. Interesting. So, and, and keep the, you know, lifeguards employed. Well, 375 like to me seems inexpensive. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It is for what you get. Is there a good fish in there? A good fish? Good, like, fishing, good fishing in that Twain Heart Lake. Uh, they let you fish Crawd after six o'clock at night, I believe. Is there fish though in there? Is my question. I've never seen one caught, okay. but there are fish in there because they eat the stuff that comes in on the birds. <laughs> 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 if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. Stuff that you comes need to in have good. Birds. You need to have good fish. <laughs> stuff that, what comes in on birds? Polywogs. Bugs. <laughs> Bugs. Yeah. Bugs. Yeah. 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 Fleas. No, oh, oh. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I mean, Whatever I know fish stuff, eat, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, down yeah. in San Diego, when we had apartments, when the little birds would come on your bed, you didn't want them there because they, their bugs would come in. It was really like fleas at that point. So I don't know what they. Oh have no, not here. Okay. No, and actually, the water is runoff from up the hill where the snow melt is. Really? Yeah. All right. And go ahead. I saw that. Uh, I was going to say, I can talk about other lakes we have up there also. Yeah, let's do that, right. Hey, we're talking to Betsy Hirsch, younger realtor at Wildwood Properties. You can get a hold of her at 209-604-2609. That's 209-604-2609. If you got questions for us, you can reach out by dialing 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915. And lendingforliving.com. You can also email us at Radio Real Estate Jerky. All right, back to the lakes that you have up there. Let's talk more about those lakes because I... I if you're going to move up to the foothills or the mountains, it'd be nice to be on a lake. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, I think, everybody. And a lot of people don't realize if you're next to a stream or whatever, that's like 150 grand more, right? The stream itself costs more. Like, Not necessarily. <laughs> certain really big there's, streams. There's seasonal creeks. Yeah. There are some streams. There's actually the ditch, which is the waterway. And it is stocked with fish. Is that so the twelve? So that ditch that goes across my property is stocked with fish? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Did not know that. Yeah. That's why I see bears out there all the time. They're fishing. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> really huh? good fishing. Actually, that's because we have cameras on our property and we won't get into that. But I see more bears, more mountain lions, more coyotes, more you name it mm -hmm. that I didn't even know was up there. In the, and deer. Ridiculous. It doesn't really have to even be out on acreage. It happens right Everywhere, there in yeah. Miwok. Yeah. 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 And Twain Hart. Just drive down the street and check out a trash can. <laughs> that's... Well, that's torn apart. Right. And that mm -hmm. surprised me because if you go to, you know, Tahoe, everybody's got bear boxes, right? Or right. Anywhere you go, you got to have, you know, trash cans are locked, this and that. And as long as I lived up there, especially in Cold Springs, everybody had regular trash cans. Oh, yeah. And then now they get knocked over and bears come through. And now bears know where to come. And so some of us lock ours, you know, certain things and the bears still figure a way to get into them. But they actually started shipping out locking ones, but they ran out of them. Mm. I think some people think because of fires in other areas, maybe that wildlife, you know, travels further and comes to our area. Well, Who knows? Well, if you live in the forest with a house, mm -hmm. you're going to have right animals. That's right. <laughs> it's shocking. I know. Because yeah. they live there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. We're living where they live. <laughs> well, and I live in a lower elevation than you do. And I have bucks. Uh, you know, deer, baby deer. I was going to say, um, I only have five bucks. I know. That's because you put it on an expensive And I've got 170 pound dogs. So um, we have a family of deer that live right on the other side of the fence from our property. And I think that they are there because they feel safe because big animals aren't going to come because we have large dogs. And it's not hunting season. Right. And yeah. it's, they can't, when it's hunting season, they can't hunt there because it's too close to your house. Bows and arrows only. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But so, yeah, so other areas, we have Crystal Falls. They have two actually, 
two lakes. Okay. And they have a horse stable there. They have a homeowners association and you have to pay a fee, but you know, a hundred bucks every three months, maybe. I don't, I don't know, you know, exactly what that fee is right now. Um, but it is not a whole lot. And I've heard of them having guided um, like tours, you know, horseback wow. riding and stuff like that guided. Hmm. Yeah. You just sign up for it. Any other lake is Brentwood a lake up there? Brentwood has a lake, and that Brentwood lake membership does not have to go with the house. You can live in Sonora, you can live down in Modesto and still own a Brentwood lake membership. Really? Yeah. Twelve thousand dollars or something uh, like that? They're up to about fifteen. Oh. For the year. No, no for part. the membership itself. Oh, and period. then there will be a tra- I mean a maintenance fee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's Lakewood Park has one. Cedar Ridge has two lakes. There's Willow Springs has a lake. And this is all in Twain Heart or right around there? Mm, between Salisbyville Elevation and above Twain Heart. Sugar Pine has a lake that's close to Miwok Village. Mm-hmm. All these lakes, I didn't mm-hmm. even know about it. I know. I'm going to have to take you on a tour. <laughs> now that I can put you back in my car, right? <laughs> she wouldn't allow me in her car. I drank. I got <laughs> stuff on her seat. Oh, she's <laughs> COVID. It's because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so we also have, you know, all kinds of different events up there. And I don't think people realize it, but in Twain Heart, every Saturday night at six o'clock, there's a concert in the park. Hmm. People start putting their chairs out at, on Friday night, I think. Hmm. And they have, you know, great bands, live bands. Local? Or uh, not necessarily. Come in from all over. Nice. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, some of them are repeats, you know, from years in the past. And they come back every year. So that's kind of cool. And yeah. Also, Sonora has a farmer's market every week, right? Mm-hmm. During that summer, what, what's do you know how long that runs for? No, a lot of the events run from around Memorial Day to Labor Day, but I have a feeling Farmers Market probably goes a little longer than that. I, I don't even know how long ours does. Wasn't Mountain Air Twain Heart, in Twain Heart in years past? Oh, Mountain Air wasn't that back that in was the eighties? That was one hundred and sixty-four years ago. I think it's probably before your. That was back in the eighties. I, re- I remember like, that. It was you know, I was like three years old. Yeah. That was no. no. I lived in Morro Bay then. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering yeah. if they're bringing anything like that back. No, or... they, they've got a couple of different events. Well, don't right. they have stuff at that? What's that winery in? Um... Couts, Ironstone. Ironstone. Over, yeah, always has. Yeah, yeah. Always has bands there constantly. How's golfing in Golf. Twain Heart? That was going to be my question. It's uh, right. Sorry. Golfing's good. That's a nine hole public course. Mm hmm. Par six, par four, par three, par know. six. <laughs> they don't make golf courses with uh, with your par. But I was going to say, when you have a son that is one under par, you don't know what the pars are for actually the golf courses. But we have Tulele Golf Course also, which used to be called Mountain Springs. Phoenix Lake has a golf course. Wow, yeah. a lot of golf courses up there. I know. We've So we've got golf. We've got uh, the Sierra Repertory Theater also. <laughs> and yeah. is this me? Yep. Uh, this is Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV with our host, Betsy Hurst Younger. That, no, you want to do I'm that not, over? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the host. Uh, with our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and president of Lending for Living. Reach out to Ed by dialing 209 404 1915. That's 209 404 1915. And I'm Mike Kelly. Uh, Remax executive realtor and probationary co-host for another week or two, maybe. And we're talking to Betsy Hurst Younger, your realtor up the hill at C21 or Century 21 yeah. Wildwood Properties. Um, when we come back, we'll be talking about the market in Twain Heart. <laughs> so don't go away. Our new reverse mortgage product limits can change the way you live out the rest of your life. Glad you're back with us here on Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV. I'm Mike Kelly, your co-host on today's show with Ed Parco, MBA, veteran, mortgage expert, and president of Lending for Living. We're talking to Betsy Hurst Younger, realtor at Century 21 Wild Properties in Twain Heart. Betsy, tell us about some of the the uh, first time homebuyer stuff you got going up. At I there. don't know if I've ever heard it called wild properties, but wild wood properties. Well, well, you guys like. are wild up there, so <laughs> I, I thought it was perfect what he said. He was exactly. just play on words there. 
but, you know, the first time home buyers, um, I would think that the pricing would be closer to a $300,000 range. Mm-hmm. And I do have one coming up in the Crystal Falls area. We talked about how that had the lake and the um, horse stables and stuff like that. And that will be two ninety nine, And that's a three bedroom, two bath, all one level. How many square feet is that? That's, you know, It's probably around 1100. Well, it's not huge. We're talking about 1100 square foot houses in the beginning. Look at that. Oh, were you? Yeah. You know, it's oh. not so dissimilar for Modesto prices, really. Okay. Yeah. Then I've got a cabin listed up in um, Long Barn for two ninety nine nine. Also, good old Long Barn. Yeah, yeah. two ninety nine. Yeah, the walking distance to the ice skating rink there in it the is. Long Barn. It is like two blocks. Wow, I know. And what amenities are under my cabin? Lots of knotty pine, and it's got a great backyard, fence for dogs, and it's got. So what did the pine do? Two be bedrooms, two bath. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the knots that are in it. <laughs> oh, God. You know? Hey, I try here. You right? did. Oh yeah. Gosh. What a man. Hey, what else is in those cabins? They got fireplaces, I assume, you know. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. We got a lot of wood up there, too. Yeah. What's a, one place you can still burn wood? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. If a woodchuck could chuck wood, wood anyway. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh we're, we're, we're going downhill from here. Yeah. I just find that, you know, going up there, it just, it changes. Everybody's much nicer up there. And I'm not saying they're mean down here in the Valley, but I'm just saying it just seems like everybody's more relaxed. It's, and, it's yeah. more relaxing. Yeah. It's yeah. a little slower pace of life, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, there's another cabin that's in the Sugar Pine area. And that also has a um, a lake in that neighborhood. And you don't have to join it if you don't want to. I think that's voluntary. And that cabin is um, for three forty nine nine. dollars So there are some affordable, affordable places. Yeah. yeah. And as a, you know, second home, right. an investment property, you can well, live there, whatever you want to do. And then earlier we were talking about the fact that if you sell a tract home in the Bay Area, you can buy a luxury, luxury home, home up in our area on acreage for probably half of what that home will sell for. And you'll have privacy, probably more square footage. I've got a couple that are over 3,000 square feet. That are in that eight hundred to eight to eight seventy five range. Wow, that's very affordable. Mm-hmm. And one other thing you're not going to have is traffic. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> hey, that brings me to a question about Airbnb. Uh-huh. Um, any restrictions, local restrictions on Airbnb? Do you have to be a primary owner to be able to Airbnb your home out? Can you buy one um, standalone and just do Airbnb with it? Are there those restrictions so, in there yet? So far, the only restriction that I'm aware of is in downtown Sonora. Okay. And you, have, if you want to have an Airbnb there, you'd have to apply. And the ones that are currently Airbnbs, you know, they are registered or something like that. You have to have a city, like you have to have business something license like to that. be able to do it. Yeah. But you don't have to be a primary resident in that home. There are Not some areas where they're they're forcing you to be the primary resident. And then just rent out a room. And then rent to a out a room, or, or rent. Nice. You can you can do like short term rentals where you can rent it out for thirty days or more. But you right. have it has to be your primary home. Well, what's, the, what's the definition of that? Of which part? Of the primary home. What did they define it as? So, well, it probably could be second home. I don't know. You'd have to find out what the the local um, uh, ordinance ordinance what, is how it's written. But it, I mean, it could be a secondary home. It's because that's a primary residence. It just depends. Right. And that's what I was trying to get around that definition right. know what that is. Hey, um, what do you think is manageable acreage out there? Because I know 32 acres is not really manageable that I have. Not for one dude. <laughs> no. I, you know, Jeremiah takes care of it. He's pretty good at it. Okay. I was going to say uh, two. Two acres? <laughs> I have two acres and a ride on more. Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty manageable? It is. You and Red take care of that on your own? Red takes care of that on his own. <laughs> That's right. I was going to say, it was all Red. <laughs> Redman's my husband, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a contractor. Yeah, yeah. handyman. Yeah. The good guy. Yep, the good guy. But uh, it's great. Uh, the elevation I'm at is about 3,200 foot elevation. And I've got a great garden going. And I've got you know, a place for my grandkids to be able to play. And yeah. And people awesome. need to know about working with agents up there because you know where the snow line is. You right. know how much snow each place gets because if you buy in cold springs and things you are going to live there full time, you're going to be shocked at the winter time. Yeah. So how important is, you know, where's the difference in snow lines and that kind of stuff and what do you need to know if you're buying up there? Snow line right now, I consider Soulsby Mill. 
and that's the 3,100 foot elevation. Okay. Yeah, around 3,000 foot. Uh, it was interesting because I did have a listing that I sold in the Cedar Ridge area. The buyers had an out of area agent. The agent wanted me to bring the keys to the buyers and meet them at the house. And they hadn't even ridden past where the, you know, driven past where the lakes were. So I had them follow me. And then I said something about, gosh, you're really lucky you have a level driveway for when it snows because they'll definitely plow here. And they go, oh, it snows here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and luckily they did want snow. So it was a happy day. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. That, I think the other problem is a lot of people need to realize about the driveways, how steep they are, whether it's down or up. And if you get snow, because some of those, I know in cold Springs, we have that one road out that in the winter time, there's so many people on the side of the road because they can't make it up it. They drive, you know, they don't have four wheel drive. They don't have all, all wheel drive. They just can't make it up it. And you need to know that stuff. And that's why it's so important to work with a local agent up there. Yeah. Right. And, and then a local agent will know what roads are plowed and it'll basically be the roads that school buses go on because <laughs> right. those are the first ones they plow. All right. Hey, we're talking to Betsy Hirsch Younger, realtor at Century 21 Wildwood Properties. You can get a hold of her at 209-604-2609. That's 209-604-2609. If you got questions for Ed, you can reach out to me at 209-404-1915, third person there, uh, 209-404-1915. <laughs> and you can email us here at the radio at real at radio at realestatejerky.com. Betsy, the closest ski resort from Sonora would, would be, be Dodge, Dodge Ridge, Dodge Ridge definitely. and then Bears on the other side, right? That's Bears the on the other side. side. That's right. correct. Up above Arnold. And the thing about Dodge Ridge is, you know, that they've started a, a mountain biking a trail or whatever, and they call it, I have it right here, chairlift access mountain biking starting Saturday and Sunday, August 13th through 14th. That's their opening day is August 9th, 9, I mean, sorry, August 13th at 9 a.m. Lifts are going to be running. They're going to kick it off and have you be able to bring your mountain bikes up the hill. And then ride them down. And ride them down. That's yeah. so much easier than riding up the hill. Oh, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. yeah. I know. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they finally learned what, you know, to do additional stuff there during the, you know, summer and other stuff like other snow places have because it's been kind of a, last seven years or so kind of a rocky years with snow and certain right. things so it's nice that they're actually doing more stuff there well you know and it says that rental packages will also be available with full suspension bikes along with helmets knee and elbow pads wow visit hmm. dodgeridge.com slash mountain for details do they have collarbone protectors <laughs> <laughs> yeah you have to get that on your own vest at yeah that time. right yeah. no it's nice it's well that's beautiful actually there. sounds pretty cool yeah that's actually because yeah. i've ridden my bike from my house up that way to and that's pretty it's brutal going up but coming back it's fun yeah i bet yeah. i know and i'm not talking about like a road bike yeah and the other thing i remember when you're riding your road bike up there drop your hair in your tires yeah <laughs> is that the skinny tire yeah oh okay. yeah if you don't you're going up and it's, psh, i was gonna say heck? because red and i went on a um a motorcycle ride where it was actually a poker run mm -hmm. okay a couple weekends ago and there were about 300 bikers and they came up from the Valley and the Bay area all accumulated and started right there in Jamestown and registered. And we did a couple of stops, you know, picking a, a card for our poker hand. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up at the Dardanelles and it was actually a fundraiser for the um, big dreams uh, park, which is a park for kids with handicaps. Up in the, that's where the, um, they go to camp at, right? That one. No, no, no. Big dreams is actually in Tuolumne city. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they, um, it's been, they've been fundraising for that for several years and it's actually, you know, an actually usable park right now, right there near the veterans hall. Well, I didn't understand the poker run. So basically you get a card as you're riding or what? Five different stops and they have you pick a card at every stop. They record it on your, uh, registration card. And whoever's got the best poker hand at the end of the run, actually, I think she won 350 bucks. Wow. Yeah. And then they had a, a raffle and a, um, you know, like a barbecue and we had a live band. It was, it was actually a lot of fun. Yeah. And yes, I have a gold wing trike. Oh, mm -hmm. so you don't fall over that much. Mm -mm. <laughs> nice. Trike. Right. Is that uh, <laughs> two wheels in the front and one in the back? No, no, no. This back? is two in the back. Two in the back. It's an anniversary edition Goldwing trike. Yeah, I think it has a trunk, right? Is it that does. where you bring all the barbecue it, it stuff? It has, has two yeah. trunks. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually go overnight. It's safer. 
So there's a lot of junk in that trunk. No. <laughs> cell, <laughs> cell phones. <laughs> Yeah. Had to go there. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to, you just set me up. <laughs> we need, where's the rubber? Uh, but what I like to do a lot is go and go to Murphy's. You know, I know that's on the Calavera side, not the side that I'm on. But Murphy's is great to go wine tasting. You can walk around in that town and just go check out all the stuff. And then by the time you're done, you're sober again. You're not right. driving all over like Napa and other places. And some well, great restaurants. You know, oh, you, really good restaurants. Then you need to register for this Tuolumne County Craft Beverage Trail. I saw that. Saw when that. is that? That is ongoing. Like from now till the end of November. I Seriously? Think. Yeah, you can... Why am I just now hearing about it? Betsy? Because you just came down. Oh, I know. Right. And actually, you can go to visit Tuolumne.com, which is the Visitors Bureau mm -hmm. um, website, and you can register for that. And it downloads an app on or downloads onto your phone and then your email address, and it gives your information. But you can go to different places like Horn Brewing Company, Arthur Michael Vineyards and Winery, Bear Tent Brewing Company, Gianelli Vineyard, Hearst Ranch. Wow. I know. Indigene, Inner Sanctum, Sonora Brewing Company, and Sonora Tap Room. Yeah. Lots of different stops. I'm, I'm just upset the snowshoe is not All producing right. anymore. Well, he retired, right? Oh, whatever. Okay, move yeah. on. Move on. I see your face. I'm sorry. I was friends with Mike, who was one of the original brewmasters, right. and he moved out of state. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a while ago. Right. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah, just, he had the one there in Snora. Yeah, I just yeah. love that snowshoe. Well, you know. Anyway. Apricot, apricot weed. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do. Me as I got, I would get pretty. I don't want to say hammered, but it was really good stuff to drink up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my wife gets hammered. I don't. She gets, actually, I'm sorry. She gets oh tipsy. Oh my gosh. She gets tipsy. He's talking about a place that's almost right across the street from his house. Yes. Yeah. Walking distance. <laughs> Lucky. I know. Uh, all right. Anything else we need to know before we get out of here, Betsy? Before you get out of here? Well, you know, Mike I and just, I are still gonna be yeah. Here. I just want to encourage people to take a visit. You know, go up to Tuolumne County. Check out some houses. I mean, you could become my neighbor. My neighbor's house is listed for six ninety nine nine. She's on a couple of acres. A house is about three thousand square feet. Yeah. How, and what's the am amenities of that house? Is it like a you know a six ninety nine house down here, or is it like a four hundred thousand dollar house down here and you got two acres? Meaning that what does it look like inside? Three bedrooms, two bath. I mean, that kind of. Well, it's three thousand square feet. So. The, no, is that what you said? Six thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand square feet. About yeah, 3, that's 000. a decent amount. Yeah, house. with a garage. And some outbuildings, they had horses there at one time. They've got a seasonal runoff when the snow melts. They have a little creek that goes through the property. And you're right there at that snow line. So you don't have to worry about getting snowed in. That's why I like about Twain Heart. That, you know, it, it, on a really 190% year, 175% year, you get a, a foot or so, or you get some, but you don't get a lot of snow. All Manageable. Day. Yeah. You know, we also have neighborhoods that are gated there. You know, the Apple Valley Estates and we've got, you know, a lot of, what I would consider high-end neighborhoods where, you know, you're not, like I said, you're not spending the same amount as you would in other areas. And are, what are the dues for gated areas like that? Good question. <laughs> okay. okay. If you're buying in there, you don't ask. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, you, if not, you ask, you can't afford no, it. That's so right. That's right. right. You know, they're all different. So I would say. It's different HOA prices. Right. So an average would be 350, 400, 500, 600. Well, one of them's probably around seven something for the year. And then if you want to elect to belong to the pool and clubhouse, then that's added on. And it's probably another $200 for the season that's not so yeah bad. i mean they can call me and ask me and i'll check into it and, and again what's your phone number again 209-604-2609 yep that's me this is real estate jerky here on power talk 1360 kfiv we'll talk more about tuolumne county mountain living and of course the real estate market if you have questions for ed dial 209-404-1915 or email us at radio at realestatejerky.com. We'll be right back. You can change the way you live out the rest of your life with our new reverse mortgage products from Lending for Living. Our loan limits are the highest available. Call us today at 209-846-9270 or visit lendingforliving.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, where we always give you something to chew on. I'm Mike Kelly, your co-host on today's show with Ed Parco. President of Lending for Living. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Right? Right. Hey, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter. 
<laughs> all that useless TV knowledge is coming to play. Coming into play. You know, I was looking back in the chat area because you were doing the show and you were talking about uh, who brought up Ma- uh, Mountaineer. Mountaineer. I brought up Mountaineer. Yeah. That was in 83. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can. I was 22. I was. Let me get count my toes. Is that the math you're having? I think I was 15 or 16. Well, what year were you born? 66. (laughs) Five years after you. 66. 66. Well, you were 17 then. Uh, No, I graduated high school at 17. So I graduated in 84. So I was 16. Because I'm in July. Whatever. I'm in July. Okay. You were around that time. You, right, had, a, I, you had a license. Yeah. I definitely, <clears throat> at, well, I drove before I had a license because my grandpa we all had did. a dairy and yeah. all that fun stuff. We all did. Yeah. Um, mountain, mountain air, man. I was in Angels Camp, 1983. It was Minute Work, Night Ranger, Stray Cats. Stray Cats. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. That's a sad one right there, man. I Tom cannot Petty believe and the that guy has gone. Oh, I'm sorry. That kills me still. Yeah. I, I just Night Ranger. And then I remember... Um, at the time, at the same time, there, you had uh, Sammy Hagar coming out with this three lock box, and everybody talked about how great it was. Mm-hmm. You know, that concert. And of course, dude, I was poor. <laughs> yeah. I, back then, I had uh, two pair of pants and three shirts and two and a pair of shoes. And tickets were like 20 bucks, right? And I don't know how much it was. Yeah. Was, that's what I remember about $20. I had, dude, I barely could put gas in my truck. And that was before Sammy joined uh, Van Halen. A long time. Yeah. Yeah. Red, green ain't me compared to red. Money talk, you can't <laughs> touch my three lock box. <laughs> Dumbest song in the world. <laughs> what the hell is a three? What lock is box? it? So I got three locks on it. You can't get in there because you can't touch it. Yeah, Do just... they store guns in it? <laughs> we didn't have to at that time. It's true. We didn't have to lock up anything at that time. Kids knew not to touch things. You know, it's interesting to learn about how many cool things are going on up there. Yeah, it's a great place. I mean, people don't realize this right there. I mean, and even on the Calaveras side, there's a lot of stuff going on over there. It's, but Calaveras side is a little bit warmer than the Tuolumne side. It's just weird. It is. And so for me, that's why I like the 108 side. Yeah. That's tall. You know, it's just cooler. Oh, that sounds kind of. And I think it was started in 18, 1827 or something like that up there. Is, you know, when they came over to Hill, what? Because it was all about the gold rush. Yeah. Right. They hit the gold rush and everybody came for gold. Moving to California, the gold rush is all. And my cousin actually bought a place up there. He was renting a place and then bought the land next door and it had a gold mine on. This is like 25 years ago. Yeah. Did he and get he was working it and he paid everything off and he kept working it and kept working it. Yeah. So there's still gold up there. It just takes a lot longer to find. Makes sense. Yeah. There's gold in them dar hills. Supposedly. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's you know, it's there's always something there, right? I didn't realize that the ditch, the Tuami ditch is what they call it. It's like a, a, a little river on your property that you mm-hmm. can get water out that had fish in it. I did not know that. Because on my property in 32 said, acres, they she said that. they stock it. I don't well, they probably did she put, say they stock it. I, that was some of the lakes. Okay. They put fish in there to eat stuff off the birds or something like that yeah. yeah well i know they stock like tulloch lake right and they stock other right. lakes comanche and other stuff with trout and other places because all the all the fishermen goes oh they're stocking today let's go up there <laughs> let's go fishing well when you go further south what is that mariposa county that has mcclure yeah i think that's yeah that's that way right, right. i'm pointing in my studio a different way yeah <laughs> That was east. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's east. West yeah. is that way right. towards, which I used to be able to know because in Southern California, I just look over and there was the ocean. So I knew exactly yeah. where well, I know was. where that is. And that's that's west. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, that's how you know where, what direction you are when you're in Colorado is you look for the Rockies. Oh, that's west. Yeah. And yeah. And you also got to look for the lotion and the other stuff because it's so damn dry there. <laughs> I'm so, glad you, I'm glad you, you know, the reason is, yeah, because I have friends of mine who own companies, they're like what we do yeah. and they're in, in their moving supplies. They lo- they put band-aids and lotion in there yeah. because of the fact that it's so dry. You can cut yourself all the time. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And humidifiers, you need humidifiers in your, in your building, or you run the shower for an hour before you go to bed or you wake up so damn dry. So is that why they waste water there? Yeah. Is that how, okay. Well, they waste it because they have it. Right. Yeah, yeah, but we have it and we can't waste it. Oh, well, they do. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, people do. You another know, that. Story, yeah. another story, another story for another time. That's right. 
So what were we talking about? Uh, well, you're listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV with our host. That's me, of course. I just read what I see here. I'm Ed Parco. I'm president and veteran of, and of, I'm going to do it one more time. <laughs> All right. You're listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV. I'm Ed Parco, your host, MBA veteran and president of Lending for Living. Along with my trusty sidekick today, co-host, prim, you know, promotion, uh, probationary period person, a little buddy, Mike, Mike Kelly. Mike, what's your phone number? 209-968-5633. All right. Now, you know, we were talking all about old concerts and stuff, but before we go, let's kind of get back into Tuomi or where, you know, hit some real estate stuff before we go. Right. Um, what are you seeing going on coming up? Anything? I'm just throwing out there. Is there anything that you know that's coming up? Any changes? Anything that's happening in our market? In in real estate? No, nothing really. Okay. Um, boy, you kind of hit me. I know. I was trying on the, to... on the blind side. And I'm that's thinking, are, are they making any changes? Well, the only changes I okay. So the one thing I wanted to say, we talked about this earlier on one of our shows. Remember that with this new uh, Kill You Inflation Act uh, or whatever it is, the, the one that they passed where they hired 80,000 additional, you know, IRS, IRS agents. agents. If you are a self-employed person, get out of the C situation on your tax return, go get a corporation, right. go get LLC, go get that. Cause they're going to come after you. I saw the numbers and it was like anybody who made less 400,000 or less, um, they were, that's where everybody was being audited. Right. But I mean, in the, you know, under seven last year, under 75,000 or less was audited 50% of those are the 50% of the audits that were done was in right. that price point because they yeah. figure they don't have anybody working for them and, and doing their taxes and, or it has stuff to do with the earned child credit that they put on there. There's, okay. yeah. there, there's a lot of fraud supposedly in that, that they use that earned income, whatever that is. Like, I don't have to do it. My kids are gone, but that tax credit you get for right. having kids or whatever, there's a lot of fraud in that. Supposedly that's what they said. That's why they're audited more. I think it's just what you said. Yeah. Yeah. They got they're nobody easier. Nobody got their back. Right. Okay. Yo, five grand more. Well, that took 10 minutes. I can get five more of those in here. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. We should start a business called the IRS. Yeah, well, they did. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah, they're shaking us over the side, taking our money out of our pockets. Anyway, so just be careful with that. That's why I want to remind everybody that new thing, they're going to come after you. They're, this is back when, like, the late 80s, early 90s, where they had a huge IRS, and that's what they did. Well, because, you, go ahead. Because they could. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, we don't want to weaponize any department. And actually, they were saying how big this department's becoming is larger than the other four departments, like the interior, all the other stuff combined. It's so big now. It's gonna, it's enormous. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see a lot of audits, which is unfortunately the one thing. If we go back to Tuolumne Market and their average days on the market, that was kind of surprising to me. How long um, is on the that, market? How long things are sitting on the market? And I and I would imagine it's just location. Um, well, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, once a fire starts somewhere, right. Mm -hmm. Then everybody's afraid of going up there because right. of fire. The other thing you run into is fire insurance is expensive up, you know, just insurance in general, because I know with my cabin, I, you know, five years ago, when I first bought it eight years ago, it was $3,000 for right. broker fee. And you can only get Lloyd's of London. Right. Then I went to USAA and it was $850. Yeah, right. I remember when Lloyd's of London was the only place you right. could get it. But USAA took it over. It was eight fifty. Then the next year it was fifteen hundred. Then the next year was eighteen fifty. And the next year was two grand. Then right. the next year was twenty five hundred. The next year was three grand. Right. And now it's thirty three hundred is what it is now. Wow. Yeah. It's so it it gets pretty expensive. You just have to. That's something you have to factor in when you're buying up there. It's it's expensive for insurance, and that's why you need to know the area because some areas has only the fair plan, and other areas have the just regular insurance. And and for you to know that. Uh, um, every um, time we're at a California Association of Realtors Directors meeting, that's one of the, the hot topics that we discuss all the time. So we're working with legislators and the insurance companies and stuff like that to try to get it a little bit more affordable. So yeah, there there could be some relief out there sometime soon. 
And you, what you don't know is the time flies on this hour. Yeah. And we're already at the end of our hour. Thanks again to our guest, Betsy Hirsch Younger, Realtor at Century 21 Wildwood Properties up in Twain Heart. You can reach out to Betsy at 209 604 2609. That's 209 604 2609. Thank you for tuning in each and every week. If you'd like to get in touch with us, that's easy. Just Google Real Estate Jerky and take your pick, whether it's web, social media, or email us at radio at Real Estate Jerky. You can dial me direct at 209 404 191 five you can get a hold of mike at 209-968-5633 all right you can remember if you can find us on the podcast just get your favorite app or you can go to the iheart app and again we proudly live in this land of opportunity where you can still build personal wealth through home ownership join us here on real estate jerky we'll we always give you something to chill on every saturday at 12 noon and sundays at 10 a.m here on power talk 1360 kfiv mike thanks again for co-hosting with the show for me today well thanks for having me i had a blast all right again Talk to you next week. Cause we got small towns and farmland. Folks who still make a living.